So, I've wanted to do a Pokemon video for quite a while. I do a bunch of weird crap in my own. <sighs> Why not make a Memories. A year ago today, I decided to upload my first video onto this channel. I had quite literally nothing in terms of experience, materials, equipment, or any idea of what to do. I just thought it'd be fun. And it was. I beat Pokemon without using any Pokemon. It was a custom solo challenge. The thing that, at the time, I didn't think actually existed, or still does. The thought process was... Since Pokemon Solo Challenges, for those who don't know, is beating the entirety of a Pokemon game with only using a single Pokemon. But to me, it seemed like all the good ideas were already chosen. You couldn't beat a Pokemon with a Magikarp anymore because, well, it seemed like, even though it is the weakest Pokemon, everyone's already done it before. You're not doing that, you know, good by doing it again. So I thought, let's do a challenge what literally no one else can do. Use a custom character to do a Solo Challenge with. And even though I doubt any of you remember those early videos because, well, quite frankly, I understand that the main reason people are here in the first place is because of the Fakemon videos. And as grateful as I am for that, sometimes it's always nice to just remember where you came from, you know? So even though this video is going to likely flop immensely compared to my other videos, and if you have only seen my other Fakemon videos and haven't seen these before, keep an open mind and hopefully you'll have a good time. So for old time's sake, let's beat yet another Pokemon game using now, a custom character. His name's but first, let's actually draw that custom character. I did a handful of these videos last year, and I realised the biggest problem was I had to try and quickly explain what the character was before doing the solo challenge with it. Context is really important here. With a Magikarp solo challenge, you don't need the context of knowing Magikarp's already weak, because that's common knowledge. But if I'm using a custom character what you never heard of, I had very little time to try and explain what the character was. So I'll explain it here. Gilly the Goat. Gilly is an old character of mine, um, he originally started off as a boss character. I was thinking of mini boss ideas for a mountain world, and I like the idea of a mountain goat, what was also part vampire, the whole chubacabra being a goat sucker, I thought, what if the goat is the sucker, you know? And that's all he was for the longest time, until a few years after I created him, I created a new story what involved a bunch of random characters from a bunch of random stories and game ideas I wanted to do. And for no reason in particular, I decided to choose Gilly as one of the side characters. Then after that, Gilly kind of became one of my main characters, what I decided to just keep making stories and game ideas of. I gave him a backstory. Why is he a part vampire? Simple. He is part reincarnated demon. <laughs> that's a whole different can of worms we'll open later. But that's also um, Gilly's type in this challenge. Obviously, since he's not actually a Pokemon, putting him into a Pokemon game, I kind of need to give him his own type, so... His type here will be normal and dark type. Normal because, well, he's just a goat. The dark type is the fact that there is an actual demon inside of him. You know, just your average goat. His ability here is going to be huge power. Because again, in all the stories I wrote for Gilly, in the trio he was in, he was always the brawn of the team, you know? The main trio kind of had a Sonic Heroes theme going on where there was speed, flying, and power, and Gilly was the power. Last year when I did this challenge for Emerald, I did kind of regret giving Gilly huge power because it made the challenge actually extremely easy, but here, Fire Red's a pretty harder game I think we're going to find out, so I'm sure huge power would make too much of a difference. And giving him the moves he can learn, Gilly can do a lot of different moves, but not a lot of them fit in the context of Pokemon. Like, he can kind of shapeshift, kind of like how like old rubber hose animations, if his legs keep running in a circle, eventually they'll turn into wheels, that kind of thing. In an actual battle, it kind of, you know, it'd be pretty cool, because he could obviously turn his legs to a spring, jump up really high, then turn himself into a drill as he does an amazing ground pound, something awesome like that. Can't do that in Pokemon, he only got four moves. So his move pull here is relatively basic, he can do what most goats can do by kicking and biting. Sadly, it doesn't go too much beyond that, except for two moves that we'll get onto later. It's really funny because I wanted to sneak in a bunch of these different references from like Gilly's past and everything, but I kept realizing it ain't gonna make sense to anyone because I've actually shown him off that much. I do at some point want to make games and stories where I show off these characters a lot. Haven't done that as of yet, so watching this, a lot of things are gonna go over people's heads, which, you know, maybe in 20 years time when I finally actually do something with these characters, people will watch this video back and go, oh, that's why you can be fun. Or not, maybe this video will flop, I'll delete it in embarrassment, and I'll never think of it again. Who knows? But yeah, that's Gilly. The squatch and squ stretchy goat, who's got an anger problem, is a part-time vampire, has a reincarnated demon trapped inside of him, and am I forgetting anything else? Uh... Yeah, a few things, but that's not important. Can we beat Pokemon Fire Red with just a goat? Let's find out. Now, stat-wise, Gilly is pretty okay. Not terrible, but not 
amazing either. His highest stat is speed, which is at 100 points, very respectable. His physical attack is 85, his special attack is 65, his physical defense is 35, and his special defense is only 25. So his biggest problems are his defense. And he's only got 55 HP, so really good quick attacker. He can't really take any damage himself though. The idea is even though he's a very powerful goat, he's also a very limp, noodly goat, so he can't take too much damage himself either. However, huge power is an amazing ability. It, I don't know if it doubles your physical attack or just increases it, but it's very good either way, especially in the early game. Petalberg, Petalberg? Viridian Forest was not a problem at all. Headbutt, huge power, everything was demolished. Until we got up to Brock. Brock has this habit of just being really annoying in solo runs. It's the same with Roxanne in Emerald. Rock types never a good uh, first gym in solo runs. In normal Pokemon, it's great because it teaches you type advantages and starters and whatever. Solo runs, you already know what to do. Rock types are just annoying. So yeah, first attempt, I lost. All I knew was headbutt and horn attack. So the, the plan would be maybe a few tail whips, spam headbutt, hope for flinches, maybe gain a huge profit. And no, too frail. The way Gilly works is that he really needs to kill everything in one hit, or he's just not going to survive a hit himself. And with Onyx and Geodude, that ain't going to happen. be fair though, at the time of taking Brock on for the first time, Gilly was only level 9, which is incredibly low to be taking on Brock anyway. So considering he actually got to the Onyx, it was alright. But either way, I started to grind just a little bit. Just up level 12 I think it was, because Gilly learns Bite. Because, well, goats can bite. And the fact that it's a dark type move in Pokemon, and Gilly is also a dark type, Bite gets Stab, which stands for Same Type Attack Bonus, which is pretty cool. And even better, because although Rock types resist normal type attack moves, they don't resist dark type moves. So Bite is amazing! Only slight problem, in Generation 3, the game what Pokemon Fire Red is, Emerald had the same problem, is that although Bite is a physical move, in these games, it counts as a special move, and Gilly has lower special than physical attack, meaning sometimes it was hard to judge whether or not Headbutt would do more damage than Bite, because even though Bite isn't resisted, it's using a lower stat than Headbutt, if that makes sense. Either way, I managed to beat Brock because, similar to Headbutt, Bite can also flinch. I don't remember if I got any flinches in the Brock fight, but regardless, I beat him. Hooray. On to the next part. The routes leading up to and after Mount Moon aren't too, too noteworthy. It's just more filler, essentially, isn't it, before the gyms. you got to get your levels up somehow. At least there's a lot more variation in types. The reason I decided to do Pokemon Fire Red instead of other games, and the reason I probably won't be solo running Pokemon Emerald again anytime soon, is mostly just because Fire Red's got a lot more diversity in the Pokemon you can find than in Emerald. Let me put it this way. If you play Pokemon Fire Red to the fullest, I'm pretty sure there's only like one Pokemon you will never actually see, and that's Golem. But every other Pokemon in the Pokedex of the 151 Pokedex, you will find just by playing the game normally. I mean, I think you have to go out your way to look for a few of them, but that's like the main gist of it. In Pokemon Emerald, there is a lot of repeated Pokemon what you find, and there's, there's a lot more Pokemon what you just don't find normally, unless you specifically trying it absolute hardest to find them, but trainer Pokemon are a lot more repetitive than in Fire Red. Pokemon Fire Red, again, you're going to see a lot of different diverse Pokemon and teams. Emerald, it's not too much. And that's why I think Pokemon Fire Red's a bit more harder than Pokemon Emerald, because although Emerald, I believe, is designed to be a harder experience, it's a lot more repetitive Pokemon, and if you get a balanced enough team, you can more or less tackle anything. I feel like that's why Pokemon Emerald tends to be randomised more often, because on their own, the teams themselves are too repetitive to actually be much of a challenge. Fire Red's a lot more challenging in a solo run because there's so many more different Pokemon you have to tackle. Right? Am I rambling? Probably. Either way, I got through Mount Moon and I decided to tackle Misty straight away because I realised I'm a Dark type and both her Pokemon are Psychic types, so I could easily just bite through this. And well, I learned that both her Starmie and Staryu are both a lot quicker than me. So I died. And I forgot to save, so I had to go all the way through Mount Moon again. Such is the hubris of man. It's actually kind of funny, because last year in the Emerald playthrough, a very similar thing happened where I forgot to save for ages, and had to replay a good hour of the challenge. So, at least this time it was only like 10 minutes. It was also really annoying, because going through Mount Moon again, on my first trek through Mount Moon, I actually dodged a lot of different trainers, I didn't on this route, so I had to fight a lot more people. At least I was a high level, but 
I was just irritated. So instead of going for Misty after Mount Moon, I decided let's go for our good old rival. And hey, that's another reason Fire Red's a lot more difficult. The rival actually cares about how good his team is. In Emerald, they just don't. And the second rival wasn't too much of a challenge. I did get incredibly lucky by getting a critical hit on his Pidgeotto. I don't know if I needed that or not. But either way, the rest of his team was pretty easy. I also learned Shadow Punch. That was my way of showing that as Gilly gets more powerful, he can harness his inner demon and like kind of actually use it to help him instead of torment him, you know? So Shadow Punch. That's also good because Shadow Punch is actually a physical move. I don't know why either, but whilst Bite is special and Shadow Punch is physical, I don't get it, man. But either way, it's now a more powerful move, which actually uses our physical power. Hooray! So after that, I was more higher level. I wanted to try Misty again. And again, I lost because they were both quicker than me. I was kind of shocked because in the Emerald Challenge, Gilly more or less swept through literally everything until very late in the game. Here, I've already failed on the second gym a few times. I didn't do that on Emerald, and the second gym was a fighting type, a four times weakness, and I still didn't lose to him on my first attempt. I don't think anyway. I don't remember. It was so long ago. But either way, I decided to save Misty for until a bit later, get a few level ups, almost die on poison on the little bridge. That was scary. I was fighting Orenberry, what I gave to Gilly. I don't know why, but I think it actually did kind of help during the Misty fight, which was kind of funny. I tackled her again at level 23, and yay, I did it. Because I was a higher level, I guess. <laughs> there wasn't too much strategy there, just shadow punch and bite until you win. So then after that, we got the SS Anne. And, uh, uh, um, uh, right. Uh, okay, so um, we've, we've got the third rival battle anyway. And yeah, nothing really too much to write home about. It was very easy. We're definitely going through the easy part of the game now. So after awkwardly forgetting that I needed cut to get to the third gym, I cut at Meowth and kept going. For those who don't know, in solo challenges, you can still catch other Pokemon to use moves. You just can't use them in battle. This is another reason why Fire Red is a great solo run, because in Emerald, it, there's a required double battle what you need, which requires you to have a second Pokemon. That was always awkward. But either way, that's neither here nor there. The third gym, Lieutenant Surge. Now, Gilly can learn Dig, and I do have Dig, but I didn't actually end up even needing Dig, because Gilly is just kind of a powerhouse. I actually had a lot of things thrown at me during this battle. I got paralysed, Raichu started using Double Team. I still won first try, but it could have ended very poorly, is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, after that, we've got Rock Tunnel. Dark Tunnel. We've got A Tunnel. And I'm going to embarrass myself a bit here, because I have not played Pokemon in a while, folks. And I have genuinely forgotten what Rock Tunnel's layout was. I remembered it for the most part, but there was a bit during the middle of my journey where I did just forget where to go and how to get there. I was very scared thinking I'm gonna waste a lot of time here. I don't time myself too well on these because I use speed up, so the time won't be too accurate anyway. But it is still always fun because I don't know if I am gonna make any more of these challenges in the future, but if I do, it's always nice to compare and see which character got the quickest, but obviously, Every other character is going to be at an advantage because I'm going to remember what the rock tunnel layout was. Gilly didn't. Either way, after a while, I got through and got into Lavender Town. And I decided to tackle the rival here because normally I always ignore him, but I kind of felt... I feel like the game designers, when making this, intended for the player to go fight the rival in Lavender Town first. So I thought, yeah, I might as well. At this point, I was already way over-leveled, so I thought, yeah, why not? And I almost lost. I got extremely close. I survived on one HP. The Gyarados has Intimidate, which lowers my physical attack, and that's Gilly's main reason for not sucking. So if he gets a lowered physical attack, we're in a lot of trouble, as I'm sure you just noticed, so that's not going to bode well in the future. Luckily, it's not as if we face many more Gyaradoses in the future, right? Oh boy. Either way, I went into the Rocket Hideout to fight Giovanni, and on the way over there, I realised there's the Black Glasses, which is an item I used in Pokemon Emerald as well. It raises um, your Dark-type moves. So even though Gilly can't use too many good Dark-type moves because they're special attack and he can only use physical attacks, it still makes them not as terrible as they would be. So yeah, you can kind of use Dark-type moves a bit better now. And Giovanni was incredibly easy. At some point pretty early in the game, Gilly learned Double Kick. And considering his only Pokemon at this time are Rock and Normal types, just a couple double kicks, job was done. Except the Kangaskhan, which survived. I did get really worried because it is a pretty beefy attacker, but it went for Tailwind, so we were fine. After that, I decided to go through Erika's gym, and I lost to a Gloom, then an Ivysaur, 
I couldn't knock out the gloom in one hit, turns out, and I got paralysed and yeah, I'll admit, got pretty unlucky and I lost. So I tried again, I beat the trainer, but lost to Erica's victory bell immediately. So we'll leave that for a bit. Again, another great reason Fire Red's a lot more better to solo run than Emerald. Emerald's a lot more linear compared to Fire Red. Fire Red, since I can't beat Erica, I've still got a lot of different gyms to go to. In Emerald, if I can't beat a gym, I kind of have to. There's nothing else I can do other than grind until I can. So that's always fun. So I went back to Lavender Town and went through the Pokemon Tower. Since I've, most of them were ghost types, Gilly can just bite them all. It's funny because his actual character is terrified of ghosts. Turns out all he had to do this whole time was just bite into him. Who knew? So after using Bite about, I want to say like 24 times I think it was, we easily beat the Ghost Marowak and went up and beat all the rockets at the top of the tower. After that, we knocked out the Snorlax, kicked him all the way back to the mountains, what don't actually exist in Kanto if you think about it, and we went down to Fuchsia City to fight Koga. I honestly thought it would be a huge problem with his bulky mucks and wheezings, but no, just a couple of headbutts, got to the job done. I was fearing a self-destruct, but no, I got a sludge. I, it did a lot of damage in the sludge, don't get me wrong, but I still beat it. So I'm not getting the same problem with Emerald, because the point problem with Emerald was that Gilly was just too powerful. I feel like Gilly is still a very good character to have a solo run in, but he's not unbeatable, as we'll soon find out again. You know, I've, I've got to at least think about strategy when I'm going for it. I can't just spam headbutt, even though that is what I'm more or less doing. I need to at least think about the headbutt I'm doing, you know? So after faffing about with a strength puzzle for about f five minutes, I realised I need to beat Erica to actually do strength puzzles. So we went back to get the job done. And yeah, now we're like 10 levels higher than her. Headbutt, headbutt, headbutt. Jobs are good in. We got our fourth badge. So after that, we decided to go to uh, Silphco and fight Giovanni again. Is he going to be harder than he was the first time? Yes, because he doesn't just have rocks and normal types now, he's now got poison types. With poison point, which poison us. Obviously. Oh wait, no, we have a rival fight before we get to that. <gasps> this, meant, this is meant to be the really hard rival fight, isn't it? Not unless you have, I want to say, the luckiest fight I've ever had in my Pokemon history. I got more or less every flinch, and if it wasn't a flinch on a headbutt, it was a critical hit. So, yeah, I was extremely scared for this fight. I didn't have to be in the slightest, turns out. Don't get me wrong, I'll admit, it was incredibly luck-based. It doesn't necessarily mean that Gilly could have done it first try again. But for what it was, Pokemon's a luck game. So sometimes you're either going to have to take a fight where you keep getting paralysed, five turns in a row, we get knocked out immediately, but also like to take battles like that, where you just get a bunch of flinches and critical hits. And during the rival fight, Gilly learnt Flamethrower. Yes, it has no actual use in Pokemon because it's a special attack and Gilly doesn't do good with special attacks. But Gilly can breathe fire. And that's an amazing fact. So we can do it in Pokemon. Okay? Okay. But yeah, so the rival fight was incredibly easy. Well, luck based easy, but still. Giovanni took a few attempts, however. Since Gilly's only attacks are physical, Poison Point, the way it works is every physical attack has a chance for you to get poison. So, considering that's all I had to do, I got poisoned a lot. Flamethrower actually did have a few uses. Um, I thought I could burn some Pokemon, and when Pokemon are burnt, it lowers their physical attack. So maybe I could get, since he's got such bad physical defense, maybe it could help him survive. Didn't really work that well, way, way sadly, as I replaced Double Kick with Flamethrower. And Double Kick would have been infinitely more useful in this fight, as he's got a Rhyhorn, a rock type. And my only attack that can really do good is Bite. And Bite's not really holding up anymore because we're getting pretty into the late game. Bite's an early game kind of move. <laughs> Luckily, I managed to get extremely lucky in beating him. I just had to fray myself at him a few times until I kind of thought of a realistic like strategy to do of different moves to different Pokemon. It's what you normally do with it. And Sabrina, the psychic type gym leader. We're a dark type. We're immune to psychic type attacks. How are we going to fare against this? In the original Pokemon game, Sabrina had a whip. That's just a weird fact that it, it's just weird that Sabrina has a whip. Oh, uh, other than that, yeah, most of her Pokemon are uh, physically weak, so a couple of headbutts, but it's easy. So even though Sabrina used to have a whip, luckily we didn't get whipped. Although, you know, it's really, you know. Either way, Cinnabar Island, Pokemon Mansion. Wow, Generation 1 has a lot of things just called Pokemon. You got the Pokemon Tower, Pokemon Mansion, Pokemon Center, Pokemart. We get it, Pokemon. 
Do, like you, you, you don't call the you don't call the vet animal hospital, do you? Some people might do actually. Either way, we got to Blaine, and Blaine was a problem, as he's got four Pokemon. Two of those Pokemon, one's a Growlithe, and the other's an Arcanine. Both of them have Intimidate, so both of them both lower my physical attack. As I've mentioned, that's the only thing keeping Gilly alive. I was trying out a bunch of different strategies here. Gilly can learn Dig, so I was thinking maybe I can Dig. I realised that won't really. the only difference that would make is the fact that Headbutt's not super effective, Dig would be, but Dig isn't stab damage, you know? So there's a lot of different variables here, what I was trying to figure out. None of them were really working at all, so I had to grind. I went back and fought every trainer within the gym, went to Sifo Islands, beat up a Bunch of Psyducks. I'm so sorry, Psyducks. I love Psyduck a lot. I felt really bad for doing it. I had to. Either way, I got to about level 50 where I just realised I've got a lot of rare candies. Normally, it's best to save them into the late, late game where they're going to be more useful because the higher level you are, the harder it's going to be to level up. I decided to use them for Blaine because it was just getting tiring at this point to go back and grind because I was at such a high level. There wasn't too many more places I could grind left. I did have a Versus Seeker, what I foolishly forgot about I could have used, but still, I used it. I only had three anyway. It wasn't 100% still, but it made it more consistent, if that's the word. Whilst grinding, Gilly learned Dragon Breath, which was my way of seeing an upgrade to Fire Breath. Instead of breathing fire, he can now breathe Demonic Fire, or Dragon Breath. Which was really useful, because I feel like Paralysis was very helpful. I didn't really end up using it for that reason though, but either way, it was still good to have. Regardless, I beat Blaine with a critical hit, which really annoyed me because I'll never know if I was actually high enough level to beat him, regardless or not. Either way, I wanted to move on. I spent a lot of time on Blaine. He was definitely the hardest gym to beat as of so far. I wanted to move on, <laughs> you know? So, Giovanni time for the last time. And it was easy. Yeah, first try. Don't, I have nothing to say about it. It was what it was. Right, the sixth rival battle. That wasn't easy. I lost a lot. Throughout the whole run, on, in a solo run, you get a lot of levels and you tend to have quite a level advantage. That level advantage started to become more and more minute as I realized that more and more of the rival's Pokemon did start to outspeed me despite being very high a level. It wasn't too much of a problem for this battle, I just realised with the Gyarados using Intimidate again, lowering my attack, and the Charizard outspeeds me. Which, considering I won't be able to knock out the Gyarados in one hit anymore because of Intimidate, I need to survive an attack from Gyarados, normally it'd be a Hydro Pump, and then I've got a guaranteed Flamethrower from the Charizard. I ain't winning. Even if the Gyarados doesn't hit me and only goes for Leah instead, I'm still losing in one flamethrower. That's how frail Gilly is. I am five levels above the Charizard and I'm still losing to one flamethrower. I realized there wasn't really any way around this. So I went back to get an old move. If you remember my old Emerald playthroughs, which you shouldn't, there was two incredibly important moves. Setup moves, Calm Mind and Bulk Up. In this scenario, Bulk Up. It raises both our physical defense and physical attack to extremely important stats for Gilly. Realising I realistically didn't need Shadow Punch that much anymore, I got Crunch now to replace Bite, so I, with the black glasses, the dark move still wasn't... it wouldn't be as bad. So I decided to forget Shadow Punch finally and start using a bulk up strategy. And yeah, so every battle from now on kind of just turned into a which Pokemon can I set up on so I can just immediately headbutt everything afterwards. Even with the Intimidate, I could now headbutt Gyarados in one hit. And then the Charizard. And then the Alkazam. Well, the Alkazam was a no-brainer anyway. He has very low physical defense. So yeah, that was the strategy from that then on. However, I've still got five final main trainers to beat. And if you've watched other solo runs before, you'll learn that those final five trainers are a very different scenario entirely. This might as well be an entirely different game from that from now on, you know? The whole game up until this point has been a different experience. The whole game up until this point has been training my goat friend to prepare for these final five. Was he prepared enough? Let's see. The first member of the Elite Four, Lorelei. 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 Whichever way you want to pronounce her name. She's got a team of five big bulky ice types. Mostly physically bulky. Gilly can't knock too many of them out in one hit. Not without a few bulk ups at least. That was the strategy going from then on, as I mentioned. I just had to try and find an opening when to bulk up, and then after that, it became pretty trivial. Although sometimes it was definitely harder to find a bulk up opportunity than others, 
and sometimes I would just still get bodied regardless. Like I said, Pokemon's a luck game. Then we have Bruno. I thought Bruno would be easy enough, a couple fighting types, a couple rock types. Yeah, I'm scared of the fighting types, but as long as I'm quick, I can knock them out in one hit. Regardless, right? I've got a bulk a few times. I'm sure the Onix can't kill me that much. Not too much of a threat. Hit Moncha. Uh, m m m oh, no. Oh, no. Mock Punch, for those who don't know, is a priority move, which basically means that as long as Hitmonchan uses Mock Punch, it will always go first. My speed doesn't matter here, it will always outspeed me. And it is a four times super effective move. And I've got incredibly bad physical defense. I'm more or less guaranteed to die no matter what against him. Oh no. And he's more or less guaranteed to always use it, because I think the AI says, Oh, Gilly's gonna outspeed us. I will go for a move that negates that. Not because it's super effective per se, but is just because it will be the best move to do, because he outspeeds me. The reason I know this is because Onyx has moves to slow me down. And if Gilly's slowed down enough, he won't use Mock Punch. So I think his only priority with Hitmonchan is to go before me. Which... Sucks. The strategy I had for Bruno was Onyx's only two attacks he seemed to have ever do was Earthquake, which was really bad, and Rock Throw. Rock Throw? Rock Tomb. Rock Tomb was the best because it was the weakest, but it also slowed me down more or less every time. I think it's a guaranteed slowdown. However, Rock Team had a pretty fair chance of missing, so the best strategy was to keep bulking up, hope that he went for Rock Team and missed, don't use Earthquake. He got like 17 critical hits out of like 18 attempts, you know? Really bad luck. It's what Pokemon is, but still. So the problem was, I was trying to bulk up to get my attack up so I could knock him out in one hit, and try and raise my defenses. However, Onyx was still attacking me every turn. So even by the time that I did bulk up fully and defeat the Onyx, my health would never be high enough to survive a Mock Punch or a Sky Uppercut from Hitmonchan, which wasn't fun. Sky Uppercut does have a chance to miss. So I had to rather bank on that or just hope that he doesn't use a priority move and I can knock him out in one hit. Because I could more or less guarantee knock him out in one hit. I was sure at that point. I just couldn't get a hit on him. So I had to do the Blaine strategy. I leveled up a few times, but then I just kept throwing myself at him because there was a lot of different variables what could happen here. Onyx could miss his rock tombs. He could knock me out immediately with Earthquake. He could slow me down to the point where Hitmonchan doesn't use Mock Punch. I would occasionally beat Hitmonchan only to immediately lose to Hitmonlee. So there was a lot of different... I feel like it was a... Each turn created a 17 different alternate universes, each with their own 17 alternate universe. At this point, there was thousands of different outcomes that could have happened. Sadly, I was living on the worst timeline. A strategy at one point was to use Dragon Breath, paralyze the Onyx, so that brought me more turns to, well, just bulk up on him, but it didn't seem to make too much of a difference, because no, my luck, he would have still attacked me anyway. So I didn't just have to throw myself at him, keep bulking up, hoping that Onyx wouldn't just on me, and see how far I can get with it. The final attempt was obviously the best attempt. He only hit me with one Earthquake, I bulked up three times, he missed three Rock Tombs. For some reason, he didn't go for Mock Punch, for some reason. I wasn't slowed down at all, I managed to headbutt him, knock him out in one hit. I wasn't slower than I hit one lead because he didn't slow me down with Rock Tomb, I knocked him out in one hit, I got a critical hit, I don't think that mattered. So then we had to Machamp, I was a bit worried, but I was like, I'm going to be faster than the Machamp, and I was. So I headbutted him in, will it be a one-hit KO? Yes, it will be. The Onyx, I don't care, bite him, let's be done with this. We beat Bruno, thank God. For you guys, I rambled about Bruno for like, what, five minutes? But in real life, it was like two hours, man. It was a long time. Bruno is meant to be like the easiest Elite Four member, but he gave me the most trouble out of any. At least in Fire Red, in Emerald. All the Elite Four members are trolly, and I hate them all. That's not true, I love them all dearly. Either way. Oh, oh, did I talk over Agatha? Yeah, that's because she did nothing. I bit her a few times. In Generation 3, it's way easy, because Dark-type exists, and they destroy most ghost types. Most, all of them. So yeah, I just bit it, headbutt it, won. Didn't even need to bulk up. Lance was a slightly different story, though, as he starts off with the Gyarados. That intimidates. Again, there was a lot of variables what could have changed the outcome. Luckily for the Gyarados, there was, a, there was a lot more evenly stacked odds. It could miss with its Hydro Pump. It could use Dragon Rage, which isn't good, but it's not the worst thing it could do. It could just use Leer to begin with and not hurt me at all. Gyarados wasn't the problem. The Aerodactyl was. Aerodactyl being one of the fastest Generation 1 Pokemon. 
even faster than the GOAT. And as I've mentioned, Gilly's strategy kind of requires him to be first, else he's going to lose immediately. Aerodactyl was a shining example of that. As I kept fighting the Gyarados more and more, it became a lot more consistent of how quickly I could end up beating it. Aerodactyl wasn't, because Aerodactyl has Hyper Beam, Ancient Power, Wing Attack. I don't remember the fourth move, but it probably wasn't good either. The strategy I started to adopt was to headbutt the Gyarados, hope for a flinch, defeat the Gyarados quickly, get into the Aerodactyl fight with full health, just try to flinch him, which didn't work all that often. Obviously, it's a luck-based strategy. Another strategy I tried is to use Crunch, as it doesn't really get resisted, because Aerodactyl's a rock type, so headbutt doesn't do that much damage anyway. Crunch isn't resisted, and it also has a chance to lower his special defense, meaning if I can get two crunches, chances are I'd win. Again, though, being a very look-based strategy, it didn't always seem to work. The only time I managed to get past the Aerodactyl, I realized the Dragonite, I didn't bulk up, so I couldn't knock him out of the head, but Dragon Breath doesn't do enough damage, even if it paralyzes him. I ain't gonna win. So I had to try and get the Aerodactyl and Gyarados both in um, healing range, so once Lance heals them, I can try and use bulk up to set up against them. And eventually, I bulked up to the point where Headbutt knocked the Aerodactyl out. So hooray! And then, even though I was on 2 HP left, I wasn't that scared of the Dragonite or both Dragonairs. I think one of them had extreme speed. I didn't really think about that at the time. If I did, I'd be terrified. But I wasn't, so I just Headbutt, Headbutt, Headbutt. Lance was done! The Elite Four is done. But for those who know Pokemon, so I, I assume all of you watching this, all like two of you, you'd know that there's still one more trainer, the Champion. Now, the Champion's been relatively easy up until this point, nothing too hard. Let's see if that pattern still continues. Now, the Champion has a Rhydon. Now, when it was a Rhydon, I wasn't scared of it at all. However, now that it's a Rhydon, it knows Earthquake and Rock Tomb, the same moves what made the first Bruno Onyx unbearable. And typically, he would always get a Rock Tomb on me, slow me down, I'd be slower to the point where I wouldn't be able to outspeed any of his other Pokemon, such as his Charizard or Gyarados. I struggled to outspeed them anyway. With the Rhydon, it was more or less impossible. The Charizard would always outspeed me. That's what I learned. So I had to be as high as HP as possible to knock out the Charizard. It was very hard to survive any hit from the Charizard. I had to survive at least one, I believe the point was. And it was so hard to get a strategy ready because I needed to bulk up because I couldn't knock out the Pidgeot in one hit, I believe. And the Pidgeot just loves spamming Sand Attack or Feather Dance, which just brought my attack way down lower anyway. The Rhydon, if not using Rock Tomb, would use Scary Face. So either way, he's slowing me down to the point where I can't even beat the Executor, he would always get Sleep Powder off on me. It was awkward, to say the least. Well, it was, until I realised that normally, the rival's scariest Pokémon, at least in Generation 1, would have normally been the Alakazam. Incredibly super powerful and bulky in Generation 1, especially speaking. Here, I'm a Ghost- no, I'm a Dark type. Psychic moves don't work against me and he didn't have any other moves other than Psychic. So I realized I could spam Bulk Up in front of the Alakazam, dance right in front of him. The Alakazam could do literally nothing but just watch and hope for the best. That's a lie, actually. He could set up screens to raise the team's defense, which was a bit awkward because I, that just meant I had to wait for the screens to go before knocking out the Alakazam. Because again, I had to knock out the Rhydon in one hit because he's going to slow me down immediately. If I'm slow, I ain't beating the Executor, the Charizard, or the Gyarados. So, I, again, I needed a bit of luck. That's just what Pokemon is, isn't it? So, yeah, the strategy wasn't too consistent until I realised that I had to wait for the screens to go away before doing it. After that, it was more or less child's play. By child's play, I mean it was easy. I don't mean the, like, 80s horror movie. But yeah, I did it. I beat Pokemon Fire Red with just a goat. So, yeah, Fire Red, turns out, was a lot harder than Emerald. I beat Emerald when Gilly was only level 61. Here, he was 69. Nice. So there you have it. I'm probably not going to make this a series because, well, I feel like people aren't going to enjoy it as much as the Fakemon ones. I feel like people tend to enjoy, instead of me just showing off characters I've already made, I think they like watching me make new characters. If you want to see more of this, by all means let me know, but if not, then just don't. I mean, if you don't want to see more of this, I assumed you would have shown so by not watching the video. Because that's how YouTube works. But yeah, this started off as a fun challenge thing. I remember when I did it last year. Oh, it's weird to think that a year has already gone by and I've done more or less nothing in that year. 
Hooray. I don't have much to say. I kind of already explained everything at the beginning of the video. I was kind of tired. I kept wanting to do uh, solo challenges because I'm in my own time. I love doing them, but I wanted to do videos based on them, but I realized all the good ones were already done. So I thought, you know, let's do my own character. This wasn't necessarily a challenge. Um, I do have other characters what, if I was to continue this series, they would be an absolute challenge. I've got characters what genuinely can't attack other than like jumping. So that would be awful. If you want to see that, again, let me know. Or if you don't want me to suffer, that's also fine. But yeah, I don't want people to think that this channel is only for making Fakemon videos because I'm not the guy, I'm not a Fakemon kind of guy. I'm a guy who likes to create things in general. I don't want to be just a person who wants to make a Pokemon game. I want to make platformers, fighters, shoot 'em ups, and hopefully as the channel goes on, I'll be able to show off more ideas and not just Fakemon ideas, you know? Hopefully people will like that. Or maybe people will leave me the second I stop making Fakemon videos. That's not terrifying in the slightest. But either way, that's done. I'm rambling at this point. I've got nothing else to say. It's been a year. I know I want to say like a good 90% of you have only started watching me because of the Fakemon videos. But if you remember those old videos from a year ago, you know, you're awesome and I love you all for sticking around. Here's to another year of making absolute crap. <laughs> Either way, thank you all folks so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, or if you're off to bed, have the sweetest of dreams. And I'll see you all in a bit. Toodle-hoo.